Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most terrifying deaths in paranormal movies. For this list, we'll be looking at the scariest fatal encounters to grace the big screen in the context of a film involving paranormal forces. The deaths need not be supernatural so long as the film as a whole is defined by paranormal events. Please note, this video contains spoilers. Which paranormal film death left its mark on you? Tell us in the comments. Number 10. A good day for flying a kite, a bad day to be Gage Creed. Pet Cemetery. Losing a child is every parent's worst nightmare, and it's this primal fear that Stephen King taps into with his 1983 novel. The 2019 version of Pet Cemetery ultimately went a different path, but the 1989 adaptation sticks with the source material by having the youngest of the Creed children meet a tragic fate. After moving to rural Maine, the Creed family is enjoying a picnic on a beautiful sunny day. You're flying it. You got it. Gage is flying it. You got it? Can I fly it now? In a minute, honey, let Gage finish his turn. Unfortunately, when his father turns his back momentarily, young Gage Creed chases a kite string onto the highway. Just a minute. All the family can do is look on in horror as the toddler is struck by a speeding big rig. <laughs> it's utterly devastating and paves the way for further horror when Gage is revived by paranormal means. Number 9. Heather Donahue meets the titular witch, The Blair Witch Project. Though not the first found footage film of its kind, the Blair Witch Projects put the technique on the map by connecting with a mainstream audience. All of a sudden, I felt like something was near me. Right. You know, kind of a eerie feeling. It, it was like a woman. The sense of realism imparted by the documentary-style approach and shaky camera work allowed the filmmakers to deliver effective scares on a shoestring budget. The movie, which is presented as recovered footage, follows three friends who set out to make a documentary about the Blair Witch. There are many unsettling moments throughout the film, but it's the chaotic final scene that really stays with viewers after the credits roll. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. I'm gonna die out of here. Exploring an abandoned house, Heather is attacked by something off camera. There's no gore or monstrous reveal. It's instead the enduring mystery of what we don't see that makes her death so terrifying. <coughs> Number 8. Bugsy pushes the possessed Amelia to a breaking point, the Babadook. Paranormal horror films use larger-than-life supernatural forces to scare viewers, but for all the overt scares occurring on screen, the best horror films simultaneously address more grounded human themes that are equally terrifying. See him in your room at night. Mom, does it hurt the boy? Mom, does it live under the bed? In the case of the Babadook, the titular figure can be interpreted as grief personified and carried to its most dangerous potential conclusion. Amelia is a single mother struggling to raise her son. Oscar, Amelia's husband, died en route to the hospital the day of their son's birth, and she feels his absence profoundly. I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. Exhausted and seemingly losing touch with reality, Amelia eventually gives in to the Babadook's influence. Just as he foreshadowed in his sinister pop-up book, Amelia kills the family dog in a shocking moment that will haunt you. Number 7. Baby Samuel's Disappearing Act, The Witch Horror films by definition seek to thrill viewers by challenging them with shocking images and concepts. Even so, there are certain lines that most horror films refuse to cross, like harming infant characters, while the witch manages to achieve the same effect without directly showing a child coming to harm. The end result is equal parts devastating and utterly horrific. I beg thee, for the sake of thy son, forgive me. Show me mercy. 
Show me that light. Set in the 1630s, the film centers on a family of settlers scratching out a life for themselves in New England. The eldest child, Thomason, is playing peekaboo with baby Samuel. Filmmaker Robert Eggers flips this time-honored game on its head, however, by having Samuel be the one who disappears. It's simple, but masterfully executed and excruciatingly effective. Number six, a fiery prom for Carrie's classmates. Carrie, high school is tough. There's arguably no phase in life when one's social status feels more important or high stakes than during these few years. Carrie, hit it! Oh! Carrie! Carrie! Oh, Carrie! Game with her on the team. Look at it. Come on. You eat shit. Popularity becomes the be all and end all of your existence. Add a super strict, obsessively religious, and downright abusive mother into the mix, however, and it can become hell on earth. Bullied at school and made to feel unsafe at home, Carrie White is essentially alienated on all fronts. When her peers set her up to become prom queen only to publicly humiliate her, she snaps. <laughs> Using her nascent telekinetic powers, she sets the gymnasium aflame, trapping her peers and tormentors inside. It's a horrific fate, and it's made all the more terrible by the claustrophobic cinematography and editing. Number five, the townspeople meet the vampires, 30 days of night. When you're in a new town, first impressions are everything. You should be courteous, considerate, and approachable. You don't bring me what I want to eat, what I want to drink. That's enough, pal. Leave the lady be. Or you can eat the locals. Sure, that works too. In this 2007 comic book horror adaptation, we catch up with the town of Barrow, Alaska, just as they prepare for a month of polar winter. While this is a psychologically taxing month under the best of circumstances, things take a turn for the worse when a boatload of vampires decide to stop by. <laughs> It doesn't take a vivid imagination to imagine why vampires might find 30 days of night tantalizing. The filmmakers, however, chose to leave nothing to the imagination. What ensues is a massacre. You'll never think vampires are sexy again. Number four, Father Karras makes the ultimate sacrifice, The Exorcist. Among the greatest and most influential horror films of all time, The Exorcist has enough terrifying moments to warrant its own list. Why you? Focusing specifically on deaths, however, the fatal fall of Father Karras certainly leaves a lasting impression on the viewer. After killing Burke Jennings and giving Father Lancaster Marin a freaking heart attack, the demonic Pazuzu battles Damien Karras for the soul of Reagan McNeil. Having been bested at every turn, the good priest takes drastic measures by inviting the demon into his own body. Take me! Take me! Unable to pass up such a tantalizing host, Pazuzu makes the jump only for Father Karras to promptly hurl himself out the window and down a flight of stairs in a bid to kill them both. It's horrific and heroic. Number three, Dick Halloran's painful reception at the Overlook Hotel the Shining. Is our list 40% Stephen King adaptations? Yes, it is, and we regret nothing. Though the author wasn't a fan of Stanley Kubrick's interpretation of his novel, it's now widely considered a masterpiece of horror cinema. Here's Johnny! With his father, Jack, fully succumbing to the maddening supernatural influence of the Overlook Hotel, a young Danny Torrance uses his fear to connect with Dick Halloran. Unfortunately, rather than swoop in to save the day, Halloran cuts his vacation short only to be cut down minutes after walking into the hotel. As the friendly telepathic cook wanders the seemingly empty halls, a sense of dread sets in. Anybody here? Then, out of nowhere, Jack attacks. After such a long, slow-tracking shot, this sudden act of violence is utterly explosive. Number two, Noah meets Samara for the first and last time, The Ring. 
Yes, this scene has been endlessly parodied in the years since its release, but back in 2002 when the franchise was first unleashed upon Western audiences, cinemagoers were absolutely terrified. It never could have become so popular to spoof if it hadn't first made a massive impression on the pop culture landscape. Your phone rings. Someone knows you've watched it. And what they say is, you will die in seven days. By this point in the film, we've already seen Samara's handiwork, and it's not a pretty sight. But witnessing her do the deed is something else entirely. Like Noah, all we can do is watch on in horror as Samara adds him to her list of victims. What makes this scene so effective is the slow building tension. There's no need for a jump scare. Samara's slow approach is plenty horrifying as is. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Paola's eyeball meets wooden splinter, Zombie 2. This masterclass in practical effects would make anyone lose their appetite. Mika hits the camera, paranormal activity. Now that's how you use the found footage technique to maximum effect. Dr. Burke gets hooked, Candyman. The condescending doctor learns firsthand that the Candyman is all too real. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pennywise takes a bite under the bleachers. It Chapter 2. One, the titular clown from Stephen King's It has mastered the art of ending lives. A cosmic being with more supernatural abilities than Bronze Age Superman. It isn't content to just consume his victims efficiently, he savors their fear. And that means that every meal is an opportunity to terrify the audience by extension. Tasty, tasty, beautiful fear. Pennywise the Clown's most iconic cinematic moment is his toothy exchange with Georgie Denbro. In both the 1990 version and the 2017 adaptation, Georgie's fate chills us to the core, even after countless repeat viewings. But director Andy Muschietti somehow managed to up the ante in Chapter 2. The fatal bite is indeed terrifying, sure, but it's the drawn-out manipulation that occurs first that makes the whole thing so deeply disturbing. You're supposed to say three. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.